I met Joel back in 2001. We actually were going to school together at the time. I was 12 years old and at that time I was in a season of life that was very lonely. Um, there was some sadness going on with things with my family and I had been praying for some hope uh, and specifically to meet my husband. Um, so at that time when I met him I just felt God and I felt this voice say there he is. And so from that point we developed a friendship and from a friendship we developed our dating relationship and the rest is history. Uh, I met Tiffany when uh, I was in the uh, ninth grade and she was in the eighth grade. Um, funny thing about Tiffany actually, uh, at the time she actually liked uh, my friend uh, at, at school. <laughs> I, had to, I had to make sure that I told him that. And uh, after she stopped liking, I was like, hey man, she's pretty cute, so we probably should start hanging out a little bit. And um, after that, we started to become friends and um, we just kind of built a relationship from there. And as time went on, we started dating. And um, several years later, here we are. So we have a relatively large family. Uh, we grew up in a church environment. Uh, my mom and dad are still married, so we've always had that positive influence. Uh, we're Southerners, so raised in Atlanta, Georgia. From the south and we have a relatively good foundation um, pretty close-knit family when Joel and I started dating our families became very close um, and we have an awesome relationship in that way and then we added to our family when Carson was born in 2011 he's six now and he has become an awesome source for just joy and fun and excitement in our family. Um, so we're continuing to grow with him and change with him. Um, we're really excited to see how that continues to develop. My family uh, is a pretty big one. Um, we've got a uh, family from New York all the way down to the South, Brunswick, Georgia. Uh, we've got the Leggett clan, we've got the Lewis clan, and now we've got our immediate family. Uh, which is myself, uh, which is Tiffany, and which is Carson, and uh, you know, uh, our family were pretty fun. Uh, I can be a very serious and passionate dad sometimes, so uh, Tiffany definitely brings delight uh, out of me and our family. Joel is a great dad because he starts off with being a really wonderful husband and he exemplifies an awesome relationship as far as how a husband should love his wife and how that affects his household. Um, he is gentle in moments that need it and he is fun and exciting and keeps up with Carson and they have an awesome relationship because he's willing to get down to his level and be patient with him. Um, He's an awesome father because he always makes sure to pastor his home first before he pastors his church. And that is massive for us because we never feel like we're being left behind, but we're always going somewhere together and doing ministry together. Um, we always feel very involved, and he continues to pour into us in that way. Uh, what makes Tiffany uh, a great mom, man, uh, she is... Uh by far the definition of a Proverbs 31 woman for sure. And, um, she wakes up before us, uh, she uh, gets up early in the morning to uh, make sure she provides for Carson, make sure that she uh, fixes all of his meals, all the things that I hate doing to be honest with you. Uh, when she's not home, I'm pretty lost. Um, she has to write out how to feed the dogs, uh, what Carson can eat, what I can't eat. I basically just disobey all of that and give him skills for breakfast, skills for lunch, and ice cream for dinner. Uh, so yeah, I mean, she definitely is a rock star when it comes to a mom. She loves everything uh, that comes with being a mother. So she is definitely, uh, she has all the qualities and she uh, is awesome. The dialogue of adoption has always been in our relationship. It's always been something that we've talked about. Um, I grew up in a house where adoption wasn't necessarily talked about, but it was modeled. Um, my parents never formally adopted any children, but there was kind of an ongoing and revolving door of young people, teenagers, family, just coming in and out, anyone who was going through a season where they needed that extra stability, they were with us. Um, and that was something that I grew up with, and it was always part of, I guess, my DNA. 
Um, and Joel and I had communicated for years, even when we were younger, about adoption um, because not only was it something that we felt was a calling on our life, we believed that it would be our sole method for growing our family. Um, Joel's been through many different things with me, um, one of those things being my senior year of high school. I was diagnosed with something called ankylosing spondylitis, and that affects about less than 1% of women in the United States. It's an autoimmune disease um, that can cause multiple different issues, uh, specifically related to childbirth being one of them. Um, so we were kind of just prepared that that was not necessarily an option for us. Um, he was with me through multiple hospital stays, doctor visits, emergency situations. Um, he would stay with me in hospitals um, when we were younger and I never felt sick and he never treated me like I was sick. Um, but we always kind of had an understanding that growing our family would likely be through adoption. Uh, so it was a very big surprise when we had Carson. Uh, when I found out I was pregnant, there was definitely a lot of caution um, surrounding that pregnancy, and we went through a very difficult pregnancy. Um, we had preterm labor from four months to the end of nine months. Um, we were hospitalized for the majority of the last five months of Carson's pregnancy, and it was just very tumultuous, um, not necessarily a peaceful pregnancy. And so, though we were very blessed to have that experience, and it was something that was not foreseen for us, um, we believe at this point that growing our family is through adoption and that we're called to that. Um, and we're really excited to start down that journey. From the very beginning, um, us not knowing whether Tiffany was gonna be able to actually birth a child, that was always something that was going to be uh, basically in play for us, but um, honestly, uh, feeling called to adoption, student ministry has really begun to put that on my heart over the last few years. Um, more because you meet so many kids that come to uh, your student ministry, to come to your church, and you recognize that they may come from a broken home, they may come from a really bad situation, and man, if I had them, all the money in the world, if I had all of the space, I would probably try to steal all of them so that I could parent them the right way, that I can love them. Um, so just student ministry has really put the calling of adoption just uh, on our hearts, on my heart. Um, you know, just seeing uh, broken families, seeing uh, broken students and me wanting to just have them as my own, like, man, hey. So um, I feel like this would just really be something great and just an amazing way for us to, uh, to grow our family. So in adoption, there are many different ways that people need support. And the journey in general can be very exhausting. It can be time consuming. Um, it can be expensive both emotionally and financially. And so what we really need from people is to really take that old saying that it takes a village to raise a child yeah. and to come around us and pray for us. Um, just you know, stand with us through the entire process believe in us through the whole process because sometimes it starts to feel like we don't believe in ourselves in the process um, and to continue to pour positivity into us um, because it has become a lengthy process uh, this is something that we've been talking about for years and so we're really hoping that this is the season that things come to fruition um, financially speaking adoption in the United States alone is very expensive and it's something that will require not only our own efforts, but the efforts of those around us to make this come to completion. Um, so that's really the purpose of kind of journaling our story along and allowing people to follow with us, not only so that we have more awareness of what an adoption journey looks like and how we can love people who are walking through that, but to also be able to support us in whatever way you feel called to do so. So we just began to pray and think about some things. So we met with the Christian um, Adoption Agency and you know she, she opened up this big book and it looked really nice. 
and the first page is like five grand to like even begin to shop your profile to a birth mom. So at that moment, guys, you know, as a dad, I'm like, oh, well, we can't afford that. So I just checked out of the conversation at that point. I'm already beginning to think about, well, this ain't never gonna happen. Once we realized what the prices were and how much it cost, I was like, honey, I don't really know if this is something that we can do. I don't really know if this is something that we can afford, you know. So to be honest, to be completely honest with you, um, my faith didn't waver when it comes to what God can do through this. I just kind of, just as what men do, we kind of just put something to the side and we just check it off, you know, because it was so expensive. And I began to honestly stop praying for it for a season. I began to just stop really believing in it because I knew how much um, it cost and which was not the right thing at all. I brought, I took my faith out of it and uh, but you know, recently over the last year or so, Tiff and I began to really start praying about it again and said, hey, well, you know, um, it would be cool to shoot a video and it would be cool to just kind of let people know what we're called to our hearts and just kind of see um, what mountain God can move because we know that he can move. So uh, we know that it takes a village to raise a child. Um, so here we are uh, trying to make it happen.